Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to New Jersey here in Farming Simulator 22 with me, C. Wally. It is the start of July and now you're going to be thinking, hang on a minute, it was only April a minute ago in the last episode. I've skipped a lot of time between the last video and this one. <laughs> uh, we are harvesting. No wave makes you sad. Sorry Barker, I forgot to wave. Hello YouTube people. I do my wax on wave that Barker wants. Redo the intro. <laughs> uh, so we've got, we have got July, which means we have got all of our wheat fields to harvest. So we currently have field seven, 60, 59, and the two over here, uh, field 58. We've got both, all those fields to do. Then we move into August, where we will have the canola to do, which is over here. And then we have, I believe, the sorghum to do as well, which is obviously our four fields down here. Then we move into September, which is going to allow us to do the grapes. And then we move into October, where we get to do our olives and our cotton. So the next couple of months are going to be very harvest heavy focused videos as we work towards hopefully completing not just the series, but also those last couple of achievements that I still have outstanding, despite my massive amount of hours in this game. Um, I did get my uh, It's Never Too Late to Farm achievement last week. Uh, when I loaded up my out baler on save, which I haven't played for over a year. <laughs> and um, yeah, the achievement popped as soon as the map loaded up. I'm surprised the map loaded up, to be honest, because obviously I haven't played it in a year. And I haven't done anything with the mods for that save in a year. My mod folder for that save hasn't been changed, hasn't been kept up to date. So I'm quite surprised the game actually loaded. I didn't actually play anything, um, as you probably you might have already seen the um, video um, on YouTube for that. It's only a couple of minutes. I did a couple of minutes just to run round the map and have a look, just basically remember things, trip down memory lane kind of thing. Because obviously that was the first Let's Play series I did here in um, Farming Simulator 22. Um, before I ended up moving off to Calmston, I think it was. So yeah, it was nice to revisit that, but like I say, I didn't do any actual gameplay because I was just like, I'm not convinced it's going to work. I don't think it's going to be stable because like I say, I haven't updated any of the mods in that mod folder. I've literally just kept that mod folder on my hard drive just so I could get that achievement <laughs> by reloading that save one year after I stopped playing it. If I'd actually been a bit smarter and had known what the achievements were for the game, I probably would have kept the Elm Creek save that I did in the um, preview weekend. Because <laughs> uh, then I could have got the achievement last November. <laughs> As it was, I had to wait until April. Because obviously, when the game launched in November 21, um, I did... I did my let's play, my first let's play series on the Hout Baylor on map, and I played that November, December, January, February, March, April. Um, so yeah, I've had to wait a little bit longer to be able to get that achievement. And like I say, I'm happy because I got the achievement. I got the achievement genuinely and legitimately. I know there are some people that had the achievement about five days after the game came out, so they obviously did some hacks. <laughs> They obviously did some cheating. But obviously the next achievements for me to tick off are the one for selling 800,000 litres of sorghum. I think, is it 75,000 litres of olives and then 40 bales of cotton. So those are the last achievements I need to get. And then this series is done. 
and then we can move on to another map. So yeah, it seems crazy that last week I finished the Riverview series after, what was it, 116 episodes. And, um, this week it looks like we could be on the end of uh, verge of ending this series as well. Um, and then I've got to find another map. <laughs> So, in, in the space of a, a week or two, I could be starting two brand new saves on two completely new maps. I'm just glad that there's so many nice ones coming out now from mob authors everywhere. I'm glad I spotted that. That was getting full. I thought for a second there I was going to, um, maybe I might have done a little bit of crop destruction. I may have just rolled a little bit there after we got full. But, um, we're not too worried about that. Like I say, this wheat, I uh, can't remember what I'm getting the wheat for. Uh, is it the grain mill? Or is it the chickens? Uh, there's some reason why I planted five fields of wheat, and I can't remember now. Make up your own reasons for why I planted five fields of wheat. Maybe it was just something as simple as um, that was the only crop I could plant at that particular time, and I'd got all the fields. Em I got the fields empty. I needed to plant something, and it was the only crop I could plant. Could just be as simple as that. <laughs> Because obviously this this save series is the one I've played with seasons turned on. Riverview was the one I played with it turned off. So in Riverview, I had the luxury of being able to plant any time of the year, harvest any time of the year. On this particular save, we're obviously having to follow the actual, you know, real time scale of when people do things. Um, and I'm pretty sure... I'm not using the UK. Um, I'm not using the UK calendar because that would have been overwritten when I re-verified my game files a few weeks ago. That's probably why, in a couple of sessions over the last couple of weeks, I've been a bit confused as to why I can't do certain crops at certain times. Because I've been playing, obviously, since I think was it was it Calmston, some uh, disturbs disturb was it disturb simulations? Did a I'm pretty sure he did a UK growth map to go with the. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Calmston Farm map um, when that came out, and I think I've pretty much used that as my default growth map for the for the whole game if maps didn't have their own custom growth map and obviously now I'm I'm back to using Giants version at the minute I might change that because I, I, I assume I still have um, I still have Disturbs version in my main main mod folder where I keep all my original mods that I don't edit or do anything with I just download them and keep them archived and then when I go to actually play a same a save obviously i create a mod folder for that save and then copy mods into that mod folder and then i edit them in that so that the edits apply to that save only kind of thing that's the kind of way i organize it and have organized my um farm sim folders since fs19 really I copy the master yeah I copy the master file to the specific the, the the map specific mod file mod folder and then I make the edits to that I don't edit the master files the master files stay in their original format and in their original state so I should have the growth calendar somewhere and obviously for some of the mods uh, some for some mods I set up sim links as well I do I create sim links so I'm not obviously using 
hard drive space by copying the exact same mods over and over again and having multiple copies of the same mod on the same hard drive, just in different folders. Um, so things that I don't edit and don't make any edits or changes to, I do sim links for from the uh, master mod file, mod folder. But yeah, we get to do all this lovely, lovely hard stuff. So we can turn off the hood for a second so I can grab the first screenshot for this video. I can then use for the thumbnail. The other day I forgot to turn the hood back on and I was driving around the map for ages with nothing on the screen. I only noticed that when I was planning to do the video edit in Vegas later that day, that evening. I was like, oh my god, I was playing without the hood for like 15 minutes. <laughs> Didn't notice. Yeah, obviously, today's plan is to get two videos recorded, so, you know, about an hour's worth of recordings, because uh, that will be tomorrow's video and Friday's video, and then we can, I can then stop playing Farm Sim, because obviously we've been playing Farm Sim now for, whew, maybe two, or, two, and a, two hours, 45 minutes, both vids on this, yeah, both vids will be on this map, because I did the, I did the Riverview videos last week, but, um, and I don't, uh, the, the, the new map that replaces Riverview, I might start on stream tomorrow. I might record the first video of that tomorrow, which will be next Monday's video. If that makes sense. <laughs> I've, I've, I've actually got a lot of, I've got I've got a lot of rendering to do today as well because the videos that I edited last night during Lady Cyrene's stream um, I didn't actually render last night I should have done I should have set them up to render what when I went to bed but I forgot so I need to render those as well because one of those will be for Wednesday one of them will be for either Saturday or Sunday um, and then there will be a stream as well this week where I do some more Football Manager to move my Football Manager save on so I can get to the next point where I can start recording the videos for that as well. In my lovely GTFC save, that's been going really well. And then obviously Wednesday with my... Um, you saw the club got took over in the last one? Yeah. I had so... Uh, again, when, when I went to the... Uh, this is going to sound crazy. When I went to move the goalpost yesterday, there was about eight of us that volunteered to do it. And about four of those people, when, when I got there, all they wanted to do was talk about the football manager say, Because they're watching it too. <laughs> and I was like, seriously, okay, you know, I, you know, Love to chat to you. Love to chat to you about the football manager save. Absolutely. Because never in my life did I ever think I would meet somebody in real life that watches my videos. And actually be like face to face with somebody that watches any of my videos. And the fact that there's like four of them. <laughs> that do. But I was like, we need to get this job done. You know, it's pouring down with rain. It's, you know, we're getting soaked. I don't want to stand here an hour talking football manager and then have to move the goalposts. Can we move the goalposts? Then go stand somewhere dry and then I'll talk to you all day if you want. I'll talk to you all afternoon. <laughs> About the, the football manager say, yeah, we, we'll go get a cuppa. We can go get a cup of tea and dry off in the bar. And we, you can you can ask me all about the save and tell me how your saves are Because a lot, uh, two of the guys Two of the guys have downloaded the same database that I'm using because they obviously used the link that I posted in the video. They've started their own saves and they're playing along too. Um, and obviously they're sharing with me their experiences and stuff. I mean, one guy says he just missed out on the playoffs in the first season and the club still got took over. 
the, the owner still sold the club at the end of the season. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty interesting on that account. So yeah, if there's any any uh, any farm sim viewers out there, anybody out there watching my farm sim videos on YouTube that wants to come up to me and have a chat in real life about you know the saves and stuff, you're more than welcome to. But I think most of my viewers are back. Most of my farm sim viewers come from the US, so the chances of me bumping into any of you guys is very slim. <laughs> Should be proud that you influence people to do a save as the club. Yeah, I mean most people, most people, most of the people in the past, or, or or like they've said to me, the way they've played it in the past is they like Schiff did the uh, create a club for Kit United. That's how they've always put the the club into the game in the past. But obviously then they've got to create all the players themselves, and obviously they're not starting the game in the right league and stuff like that. Um. It's so much easier when you've got a proper database that has all the proper league, has all the proper players, has everything set up, and you can actually play it properly. So, I imagine a lot of those those guys will now be now be using that database every year. So when the new game comes out in November, they'll use the database that releases shortly after in the next game as well. Because I've been using this level 10 database from. Um, Lionel, I think his name's Lionel on the Sports Interactive Forum. I've been using his level 10 database for the last probably six years. I don't actually start my like real, real proper save in Football Manager until that database is out. Um, obviously in the beta, when the game goes into beta, just before release, I normally muck about obviously as Man U muck about with Man United and then for the first few weeks after the game's released I obviously carry on that save um, but obviously that save usually goes pretty wrong pretty quickly because obviously the differences between the beta and the actual release Sports Interactive continue to tweak the match engine and change things under the under the hood and then all the tactics that you used in the beta just stop working <laughs> And you have to start all over again when the game's actually like fully released. Um, but yeah, as soon as the as soon as the level 10 database comes out, I download that and I start. That's, that's all Sports Interactive do. That's all their updates do, Bar. All the, they do in their updates, Barker. They just nerf everything. They nerf everything that we find and exploit. <laughs> you know? I mean, obviously, in FM22, it was the... Let's just stick the biggest player you've got on the near post for corners, and you're guaranteed to score a goal every set beat. Every corner, you're guaranteed to score. Stick the big lad on the near post. Job done. So then they nerfed corners. <laughs> and it's like the last update. The last update to the game. Um, the winter update that they released. Obviously, they've, they've, they've taken a lot of flack for how bad the defenders were. Uh, and the, the defending AI was in the game. So to fix that, what they did was just make all the, the attackers rubbish. <laughs> Make all the attackers rubbish. Don't make the defenders better. No, 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 no. That's that's too easy. Let's make all the let's make all the attackers rubbish. So now you've got matches where you have 50 shots and only have like three on target. <laughs> and it's like, oh, cheers. <laughs> Mm. 
I mean, in F23, you have Watty on the team sheet and you win. Sometimes, if I don't get sent off, I got sent off in that last game I watched. In Shift's last stream. I'm, obviously, obviously, it was a Tuesday night game, and I wanted to get home early to watch EastEnders. <laughs> I had to get home early to watch EastEnders, so you know, I got myself sent off pretty, pretty, pretty quick. You know, you need to know what's happening in Albert Square. Is taking quite a lot. I see. This is now. Now I'm actually thinking to myself. I probably could have done with investing in a second harvester. I could have done with investing in the second harvester. Um, like I say, we have got five, and especially when we come to do the sorghum harvesting, it would be a lot easier if I had another uh, harvester. I've got money. got the money, perhaps what I can do is if I hire an AI worker in a second, do this, finish, carry on harvesting this for me, remember to hop out so he doesn't just sit at the end of the field, twiddling his thumbs, I can go to the uh, s store and purchase another um, harvester. I mean, that holds, what, 15,500. That one holds 23,600 litres, does it really? That's a nice capacity. Uh, yeah, I'll have that one, please. Our crawlers. Transport wheels. Transport and weight. Transport. Normal with fire protection system, really. I'm going to have the crawlers on this one, I think. Windows. Uh, no, I don't want tinted windows. I hate that. One for yes. I'm gonna have long pipe. Numbering no. Signaling US. Side platform. No, don't need that. Exhaust one. Where's the exhaust? That on the back. I'm gonna have design two for that one. GPS. Yes, we will have GPS mod installed because I do like GPS. Um. Sold for less than a million, loan back instantly worth nine million long. Not just loan back, but re signed on a five year contract. So, yeah, made a profit. They sold me for some money and then got me back for next to nothing. <laughs> uh, right, I need a header now. Uh, headers. I might get another honeybee. We want another honeybee, really, don't we? Um, Airflex jobby. I don't, I don't think I've got any others. Um, that's 18 and a half meters, that one. Which one have I got? I've got the 11 meter one. I think we can go a bit bigger than... I might go 15.2. 18.5 is probably a little bit too big. No, I don't want height control. Um, so I will buy that. And then I need the um, uh, 
I need the header trailer for it. And I know how the header trailer works now. Uh, I never bought the Honeybee one before because I had no idea how it actually worked and operated. Now I do. Um, so yes, I will have one of those. Unload this guy. Lifetime, you mean? He's keeping you for helping with the with the mods. Yeah, for the graphic. It's a shame I couldn't change, couldn't work, figure out how to change the badge for him. But it turns out from having a chat with people on the um, skinning hideout of the Sports Interactive forums that the Creator Club badge gets hard coded into the save, so you can't change it once you've started the save. Um, if you could access the save file, open the save file. And find the line of code, you could probably change it manually. Because you could just obviously change the link to a different file. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have access to any of the tools that opens up the um, save files. So the important thing is we get, obviously, the kits. The, the kits and stuff. And obviously, I've just, I've just told Shift this morning about a program called Kit Basher. That you use for... Um, making your own kits in um, FM Football Manager and have been I've been using that for a couple of years so you should be able to make a lot better kits now <laughs> and you would be able to change them a lot easier every couple of seasons when he has and when he needs to in his save right that's fine Right, I need, I need a, a, a tractor. Probably, if I've got, you'll do. Because I need to go down to the store to get that new combine header. And set all that up. So. trying to remember now this is the bit where I said yeah I know how the, I know how the new header trailer works now and then you watch I'll get down to the store in a minute and I won't remember how it works because <laughs> it's been a while since I watched the video uh, that someone made that shows you how to use it because I was using it wrong originally and I thought this trailer is far too small for these headers it's ridiculous the headers don't fit on it and I ended up like, like for the, 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 the header I've currently got over on, I just bought a random um, Giants header trailer. And it kind of fits, but kind of doesn't. <laughs> um, at the same time. Have I, dri I didn't drive past the store, did I? No. In we go. Yeah, I need this. Right, I think I can do this one of two ways. Oop, steady. Steady. If I bring that round this way. And then go and jump in the harvester. Back this up. I go around this way. Oh, I tell you what, it doesn't steer. It doesn't have a very nice, uh, tight steering angle. Certainly not in reverse. That wasn't very movable. Maneuverable. Right. So that goes on there like that. Okay. Right. Now what we need to do. From my memory. If we bring this along here. Just, no. We disconnect that bit. This is the bit that I didn't w work out previously. This is why I, I, I didn't feel 
that the mod was all that great. So that goes on there, like so. And then if I... Uh, no, pick that back up. If I drop that, now what I can do... A lot of running backwards and forwards in single player. Obviously in multiplayer you'd have one person doing the uh, header trailer in and one person driving the, uh, the combine which would make this a lot easier. I might have to lift it back up again actually. Uh, is it that end? I, th I think it's that end. Yeah, I think I've got to lift. I have. A, I think I've got to lift it back up. I believe that. I think I've got to put that under. Haven't I? Yes, there it goes. Right, now, should be able to disconnect. No, did that wrong again. Oh, I've got to get in the tractor again. <clears throat> Yes, there, right. I need to change it. Because uh, we are. Oh, it's automatically disconnected it. Okay. So, as soon as I connect that bit, it automatically disconnects it from there. Magic. Right, that's it. That's all sorted. So now, I can drive the header to the field. And then we can bring the combine. Later. But, for those of you sad, lovely, one, well, no, not sad. Well, you will be sad, because obviously for the YouTube viewers, you've reached the end of this video. Um, which means you're going to have to wait to the uh, uh, Friday. You're going to have to wait for Friday's video to see me use the new combine harvester. I know. I bet you wish you were over here on Kick watching me live stream this, and then you get to see it now. So, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you Friday. Goodbye for now, everybody. And that's going to make Barker happy because I did my wax off. <laughs>